Welcome back to round number one here at Guardian Games for Modern Mondays. I'm Travis Cooper, hanging out with... Ian Lunger. From Portland Paper. We're here every Monday showcasing some analog, modern Magic the Gathering. It looks like we have another cool matchup to finish up round number one here. We have... Evan McEwen on Astral Drift and Aaron Zelder on Azorius Control. I'm really excited to see some Fleetwell cruisers drifting down. Like, Yeah, I'm a big fan of Astral Drift. And it looks like Evan was on a mulligan there, scribed to the bottom. And it's going to take two. Two shock in an overgrown tomb, and... Cast an Aether Vial. I have no idea what it's going to be in this Astral Drift deck. <laughs> yeah, nor do I. I wonder uh, if it'll be... Uh, my guess is... Well, I mean, obviously we're at least at Abzan. Right. As Astral Drift itself is white, so... I saw a Tidehole of Skuller in the hand. Skuller's great with that card. Skuller with the old templating, such that if you blink Tide Hollow Skuller as it enters the battlefield, you'll be able to exile a card, and it will never come back. And we get the Tide Hollow Skuller cast. We get a Surgical, a Jace, a Path to Exile, an Oust, a Flooded Strand, and an island. Aaron's going to just shortcut there, saying when you make your next game action, I am going to fetch and find this land that I will not show you while you make your decision. I appreciate that kind of gameplay there, especially when you're down on time. But in general, always being able to shortcut decisions that don't uh, matter for like functionality and dexterity purposes is always nice. Yes, and Aaron fairly well insulated against this Tide Hollow Skuller having both Oust and Path to Exile in hand. I appreciate Evan's uh, decision to name or to take Oust there as Path to Exile ramps him, so I think that's a great choice. I assume you're going to go search up a land? Yep. And Evan searching while Aaron continues the turn. Both players appreciate the clock here and are trying to play efficiently. You always think you're going to have more time to search when you pass to blue white control, but they usually pass back pretty quickly. <laughs> uh. All right, vial on one. Are we going to tick up to two? We are. Really like Aaron's Path to Exiles. Rebecca Gway, one of my favorite artists. Yeah, some gorgeous, gorgeous art. Some great choice and basics on both sides. All right, we're 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 drifting. Let's take a look at the namesake card. And Astral Drift is in play. Uh, it is just hanging out in our NAR zone here. <laughs> uh, oh, and Aaron with an Onslaught Planes as well. Let's take a look at Astral Drift. This is the promo version of the art, which I find extremely confusing. It's a Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Oh, and it's drifting? Like, is this the Fast and the Furious version of the art? I probably so. Too Fast, Too Fleet Wheel? <laughs> oh. Yikes. <laughs> I can't even remember. There was a, someone that was in those films that died recently that everyone was bummed out about. But There we go. Oh. That's the art we're actually looking at. All right, Vial goes up to three, and now maybe some interesting things get to happen. Excuse me. For everyone watching, there is an Astral Drift in play on Evan's side of the table. It's just a little out of our coverage area. Can you please play a little faster? Yeah. We're uh, go to time if you don't pass. Upkeep. After I draw or before, you said upkeep. Okay. Targeting Upkeep, we're going to get a Flicker Wisp targeting Hallowed Fountain. Off of the Aether Vial. Um. Aaron's thinking. Usually, if you are the Vial player, you say activate Aether Vial before you put in your card because you are able to um, respond to the activation of the Aether Vial as the opponent. Okay. 
astral drift cycle, I'm going to cast a snapcaster mage. Wow, so this is a very complicated stack. So Evan is cycling an astral drift while he has an astral drift. So he's actually getting two triggers off that. He's getting the cycle of the astral drift, which does something. And he's also getting a trigger off of his astral drift in play that we cannot see. That said, Aaron kind of made that not matter by <laughs> pathing. <laughs> Basically, it, mean, it meant that Aaron had to use all of his mana in the upkeep. That entered this turn and pass back to you. This will enter and it will enter tapped. Okay. Keep it at three. Okay. And Aaron has his Hollow Fountain be able to enter the battlefield at the end of the turn due to Flicker Wisp and elects not to pay the two life to untap it. This does appear In the to upkeep, be. we get another activation of the vial. Uh, it seems like Evan isn't waiting for Aaron to respond, which usually when you're playing these tricky, like, blue decks against each other, you, you really want to be clear with your communication. Uh, yeah, players obviously worried about the time with eight minutes left and only on game two here. It is an issue with this Azorius control deck where it's pretty set up to uh, beat a lot of the top decks in this meta with some board wipes, a lot of planeswalkers, but uh, the win conditions are kind of slow. We have a stack going on and the oust targeting the Flicker Wisp in response cycle of Scattered Groves, which will trigger Astral Drift, and that is also targeting the Flicker Wisp. We are waiting on Aaron to decide what will happen here. That'll enter in your end step. Uh, your end step. Your end step. Um, that's fine. Okay. Out. That resolves. I will attack you for two. Okay, go to 14. Mm -hmm. And Evan dropping down to 14 uh, after attack by Aaron. Um, I believe I have. Yeah. You and, I'll shock myself. Okay. and Aaron shocking. Things getting hot and heavy already in this matchup. I see a seed rhino in Evan's hand. <laughs> yeah, that card's good. Uh, it's a great card to blink. Oh wow. Get a Restoration Angel here. For Aaron, maybe Evan thinking about doing oh some gosh. cycling before a block. <laughs> the, amount of, the amount of blinks oh is God. just insane. Okay. Resto's on the stack. Evan yeah. is going to probably cycle this Astral Drift. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is on the stack. Resolve you are before blockers. Sorry. Resolve okay. before blockers. Okay. So we need a Resto target. Okay, I'm going to go out and check on these folks for a minute. I'll be right back. Hey, Aaron, uh, did your resto angel come to the play? It doesn't need to be triggered. You're right. Yeah. This so enters. So, yeah, this will enter and then target. Target's off. I'm not a matter of that. Um, yeah. Just clearing up the board state here. Resto enters and thus has an ETB trigger that must be put on the stack. That ends up targeting Snapcaster. Ultimately, we're at the same board state in any case, and the Flicker Wisp does take down the Jace. Um, the cryptic command bounce that and draw a card. This is a tough matchup to play on a quick clock. There's a lot of game actions happening. Uh, in response, targeting it. So we're shortcutting a little bit. Vile activation happens in response to surgical. It's a very complicated board state, and these players are trying to play quickly. Yeah, this is a tough space to navigate in a short amount of time, as it does take time for all these game actions to happen, for the witness to for the aether vial to 
be activated with no response. Surgical astral drift. So you take four total. I'm down to twelve. Okay. I'll attack you with snap capture mage. Uh, well, we see a block. After it hits, if it hits. Uh, no, I'm and it looks like Evan will not tender a block, and will drop to 12. And we're digging through the deck to exile all those astral drifts. That's one, two, three, four, right? Yep. Better not be playing any more than that. All right, you want to just pick <laughs> those out? Um, it'll be your go after that. Well, we're going to get a Siege Rhino here for Evan off that Aether Vial, I presume. So even in the heat of the moment, a very clever play by Aaron to bounce the Astral Drift to hand and then Surgical from the graveyard. So he has essentially gotten rid of all of the Astral Drifts on Evan's side. He is, however, tapped out, and I imagine that Siege Rhino will be making a showing shortly. It's been a while since I've seen Siege Rhino. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was a scourge of many formats for a while. Standard for a year, and then when Birthing Pod was legal and modern, Siege Rhino was sort of what put it over the edge of having both a combo and a value train. Man, when you're looking at Hogak right now, Siege Rhino seems like the most <laughs> innocuous card. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how that card could have actually been a problem. <laughs> All right, Evan electing not to attack, holding up everything for blockers, or opting. Aaron likes what he saw, keeps it. Ooh, tough spot. It looks like with about a minute and 40, our clock is slightly off, about a minute and 40 left. We are probably playing for a draw here if we're on Aaron's side. Move to combat. Man, Aaron electing to come in with everything, even knowing that that Siege Rhino can get viled in. And looks like we're just setting up a block of Snapcaster Mage with Eternal Witness. Evan dropping down to 5. This blue-white deck doesn't play any direct damage. That's a big deal. <laughs> and we get a cycle of the land at the end of turn, and... Looks so like Evan's picked up a couple lands here. Evan decides not to loam back, or sorry, dredge back the life from the loam. Picks up a Kite Sail Freebooter. So Kite Sail Freebooter is going to resolve in response to the trigger. Aaron's pathing the Siege Rhino, revealing a land. Is a flying blocker. Travis just going out there to let him know they do have a time. They do have a time extension, so we are extending their time for a minute here. Another freebooter. Aaron looking at a cryptic command. Gonna have to snap this off. I'm gonna cast cryptic command. Tap your team and modes are tap the team, bounce his own snapcaster. That will resolve. So it looks like the match will finish at one all for Evan and Aaron.
Some good games there. That Astral Drift deck really showing the value power that it has. And Aaron, with good reason, surgicaling it to stem the bleeding of all of the value that Drift was creating in game two. Travis, thoughts on that matchup? Oh, well, thanks for taking over coverage while I went and played Judge for a minute off that time extension. But yeah, that seems like a pretty hard matchup for Blue White, especially if you're able to resolve an Astral Drift. Um, Vile is a tricky card for Blue White to play around, which is why Humans is sort of at the top of the meta. Um, right now we have Hogak, mm -hmm. Phoenix, Blue White, and Humans that are hanging out at the best decks. Uh, and sometimes Blue White can have a decent yeah, game against um, Humans, but when you throw in Vile there, it's just really hard to play around. Incidental damage and uh, instant speed putting creatures into play. So add cycling to that, and it gets really tricky to play around all the effects that uh, this Astral Drift deck can have. Sure. And it is kind of funny how, in some ways, the blue-white deck's biggest enemy is the clock, as the deck tends to get much, much better after sideboard in a lot of cases. And so oftentimes you're hoping to maybe win those two post-sideboard games, but getting through all three games can be a challenge. Yeah, and uh, basically your game one plan is to win off a Planeswalker Ultimate or a Snapcaster of Indillion Click Beats, which can take quite a while when you're playing conservatively. But it looks like that's going to wrap it up for all the games here in round number one. And we're going to have pairings posted shortly. So we're going to step back for a minute or so and get you round number two of four of Modern Mondays here at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. <laughs>